Good morning. This is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And today we're continuing our series on bringing revival to America, your country, your state, um, wherever it is, your community. And we are, I'm sharing with you from my book, Feed My People Joy. Kingdom Living for End Times. And today we're going to start on chapter 9, which is putting, putting on the whole armor of God. And also I wanted to tell you that you can read my book free, uh, chapter at a time on my website ribbonstheclown.com uh, the chapters might be titled different <clears throat> but right now they're being switched out so that you can um, you know there's about 15 of the chapters on there called different things um, you get them free download them free also street witnessing tools that are going to be put up uh, in the next couple days and I'm going to be sharing with you on that soon um, anyway okay so the kingdom armor of God is your prayer armor in Ephesians 6, God says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And how do you do it? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks of the enemy. Uh, the Word says in Hosea uh, 4, 6, that my people die for lack of knowledge. <clears throat> so, the more you know and the more you get into the Word, the more you're going to be walking in the abundant life that God wants you to walk in. Okay, let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Uh, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But the weapons of our warfare... Uh, had an ant on my foot. But the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, um, now, number one, it pulls down strongholds. Number two, it casts down imaginations. Casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Well, what is your obedience there? Well, first of all, it says that our weapons pull down strongholds. They cast down imaginations. And it casts down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So your part is to take your thoughts. You're saying, for example, I feel sick. I look sick. I smell sick. I, everything sick. Okay, that's how you think, but you're supposed to bring those thoughts. Oh, I have this disease, I'm going to die, I've got this sickness, this is going to happen. Okay, bring those thoughts into obedience to the Word. What does the Word say? By His stripes I have been healed. And you meditate and you think about those scriptures, and you bring those thoughts into obedience and in line with His words. The Word says you're supposed to think of things lovely, pure, praiseworthy, virtuous, honorable, good report. Um, thinking thoughts of being sick and dying is not those things. So you want to bring your thoughts, control your thoughts, because your thoughts, out of abundance of your heart, your thoughts, will, your mouth will speak, and then it will produce a harvest, because seeds are, uh, words are seeds which produce harvest. And thoughts produce words. Okay, the war is in your head, according to that scripture. <clears throat> and that scripture that said, think of things that are lovely, pure, praiseworthy, that is Philippians 4.8. 4, 8. 4, 8. Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And also Romans 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In other words, the more you get into the Word of God, the more you think on these things, the more you speak these things, the more you're going to be proving God's perfect will. In other words, God doesn't God's perfect will is health, not to be healed, not to be sick at all. So number one is health, number two is healing. You know, so so perfect will is never to get sick, and then um, his his will, if you do get sick, is for you to be healed. Okay, but you're not going to get there unless you transform your thinking. You have to repent means to change your thinking. Um, you need to change your thinking to agree with God says. Um, in Ephesians four, it says, "Don't walk as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind." In other words, everything that they they think they do, they don't think about it what they say, they just blurt it out. You don't want to walk that way. You want to walk according to the Word. And then it says, Finally, brother, in Ephesians 6, put on, uh, Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay? Our war is not with people. If you have a, a gang fighting after you, one gang against another gang, they're fighting each other. But that's really not our war. Our war is not against your spouse that says something stupid to you. Our, or our, our neighbor that says something stupid. 
our war is not against people because people are controlled by the de by demons by uh, spirits. Everyone who does not have Jesus in their heart is controlled and manipulated and deceived by uh, Satan or one of his demons. So. <clears throat> Our war is not against people. Our war is against, if you continue Ephesians 6, 18, it says our war is against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's what you're fighting against, and those are spirits. And you fight them uh, with, with uh, part of the armor, which we'll go over later, which in this chapter is what we're doing. Um, in order to stand, you have to have your lo loins girded about with truth. What is truth? Where's that? And again, what is truth? Truth is the word. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all persever perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're going to go over each piece of this armor individually. These are the six, there are six pieces of armor, and you need to understand these things. You need to understand what the truth of God is, and that is the finished work that he did on Calvary. It's not just salvation. It's a whole package deal. It's prosperity. It's salvation. It's healing. It's wellness. It's being whole. It's having wisdom. Uh, it's not having a curse. Okay, we need to understand who we are Okay, we need to understand that we are now at peace with God. We need to know the faith of God and how to use it. We need to know and understand salvation and what that really means. We need to um, understand it according to the Word of God, not according to religion, and not according to tradition, but according to the Word of God. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see here. Let's start with the belt of truth. Now, <clears throat> that's really the first piece of armor that you should put on because John 6, 17 17 says your word is true so no matter what the circumstances look like the word is the truth the, the circumstances are the facts the facts everything that you can see hear, feel smell taste or touch with your physical body can be changed with words okay the word of God is true and our job is to bring everything on this earth in line with the word of God uh, your word is spirit and life, John 6, 63. The belt holds up all things. If you don't know what the word of God says, you'll believe any religious or traditional lie uh, that comes along. And there's a lot of them. John 3, 1 says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. Okay, God wants us to walk in truth, not the things that the world teaches. You see, religion is Satan's kingdom. It's not God's. Religion is is um, a bunch of do's and don'ts. Religion always demands something from you. But Jesus brought us grace and truth. And grace always gives what we don't deserve. That's how you can tell the difference between religion, which is man-made, or Satan's substitute to draw you away from God. That's what religion is. Christianity is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and he came to give us the truth and he came to give us grace so the difference is number one religion always demands something from you always demands for you to do something always demands something from you Christianity and through Jesus Christ always gives you something it's grace it's truth it's what you don't deserve what you don't um, need what 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 you have no right to it's grace okay so that's going to be it for today. Um, tomorrow we're going to go over the breastplate of righteousness. And my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And I'm